Motorcycle fans, we have uncovered a true gem. Hundreds of finely restored vintage motorcycles. Oh yeah, two strokes. We got them. And we're gonna give you a little bit of inside information on how these restorations are performed. Guys, we're at Ken Cycle Repair in Reading. We've got so much to see. Sit back, relax, let's go. Universe, we are on the road on the quest to bring you the most impressive motorcycles we can find this time from snowy cold frigid Redding Pennsylvania as always Jack's got your back sit back relax settle in motorcycle fans because there's no telling what we're gonna find here okay Ken cycle repair I know there's more than 100 motorcycles on the property all finally immaculately restored I'm talking about two-stroke triples I'm talking about classic Japanese bikes maybe even some hot rods who knows what we're gonna find let's go talk to Ken Miller himself and see some of this amazing collection make sure you stay with us till the end and if you see a bike you had if you know anything about make sure you let us know down in the comments we love those moto stories Get in here and check this out. Wow. Wow. What a shop. Mr. Ken. Mr. Ken, thank you so much for having me. Boy, it may be the middle of winter. It may be a Saturday, and you guys are just in here grinding. Who do we have behind us? Sonny. Sonny, nice to meet you. Thank nice you so you much, too. guys. I've heard so much about your collection. I can't wait to see what we have. I see there's already a flurry of activity on the lifts. What are you guys working on? This is a 1972 DT2, uh, total restoration. This is a 1973 uh, CB750. Everything gets done between zinc plated, uh, complete like ice brand new. Uh, the engine is here. All the covers are being polished and it's being reboard and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just these are for customers. How many years you been doing this, Ken? Um, 59. <laughs> God bless you. And your second generation, right? Your father did this as well? Yes. Yeah, my father had uh, <clears throat> the motorcycle shop raised Yamaha. Okay. Which is now standard. Now, guys, we could hang out in the shop for a long time, but... Ken, we got to check out your showroom, one of many showrooms. Uh, what I want to get into right away, I got a lot of fans who love the two strokes, the old school two stroke triples, and you have some unbelievable ones. All right, get ready, cycle drag, because we have a trio, a triumvirate of old school two stroke triples that you're going to love. Ken, we begin with one of your finest motorcycles. This is a 1974. S3 400 two stroke triple little bit of a swerve here because we're showing off your restoration skills but even more amazingly you're telling me this one is unrestored all original that is 100 true <clears throat> it is 100 original not even taken apart to clean carburetors were done and the inside of the carburetor and i think the front caliber i had to rebuild that other than that there it's never been a part. Oh my gosh. Where did you find such an amazing cherry motorcycle? Uh, up in Allentown about 18 years ago. Uh, a gentleman that worked for Mack Truck owned it. And his wife said he had to get rid of it because he didn't drive it anymore. And you're talking the value of this thing has just absolutely skyrocketed. Yes. <laughs> the price on that bike now would be about $8,000 to $10,000. Oh my gosh, that's a... <clears throat> due to the condition of it. All right, H1 fans, get ready for this. 1972 Kawasaki H1 500. Gotta love the old two -shirts. All original, one owner. Man was deceased, bought it from his wife well, maybe 15 years ago and just cleaned it up. Well, you don't see them in this condition. And there's so many enthusiasts out there that crave for the two strokes, the nasal satisfaction, the, the sensation you would get. I'm sure you've been on these many times. When you grab that throttle on one of these triples, the power band is unlike anything else. Yes. The you, widow maker, the 750 is the one that you really have to hang on to. Semi restoration on this beautiful 1975 H1 500. What all have you done to this one, Ken? No, that one has the cylinders were reboard, carburetors were done, gas tank cleaned, and the brakes fixed. Otherwise, it's original. 
Original paint, original seat, vendors, exhaust. What's the hardest part of restoring one of these motorcycles? Finding the parts, and OEM, what, OEM parts. And you bring up a good point because what we say now, and especially as we take a look at the KZ that we're gonna get to in a little bit, you know, a lot of folks will tell you there's more available now for these motorcycles than there was reproduction, but a true aficionado like yourself, you try to stay all original for some of these shows that you enter. How difficult is that to find those OEM parts? We spend quite a few hours legwork and you have quite a few contacts and stuff right there. Uh, to find the little stuff, I get everything re-zinc plated or re-chrome plated. Uh, the hardest stuff to find would be mm, a good gas tank, but all these are original gas tanks that belong to these bikes that were in nice shape. Truly amazing. Uh, and I know a lot of folks will talk about how they're only original once. You know, you yeah. find so much that has been modified or something that's been painted over. To find something that is unblemished and has survived is so incredibly rare. I mean, I, I got to imagine there's only a handful of these motorcycles left original. Almost every motorcycle I own is original paint. Wow. And that brings us to one that's near and dear to our heart, 1978 KZ1000, all started, of course, with the 1973 Z1900, the New York Stake, the bike that took the sport bike to the next level. Many say Honda started the sport bike craze with the CB750, which we love, but boy, Kawasaki took it to the next level here, didn't they? Yes. What have you done to this motorcycle? Uh, detailed it. Everything's just been re-detailed. It does have a re chromed front fender and handrail and an aftermarket seat. Otherwise, it's original. The detail dot. Very cool. Right next to it, a Honda CB1100F with, are those the CR carburetors that are super valuable? Yes. What's the value on this? Oh, about three thousand dollars. Did you ever think those carburetors would be worth that much? No. Wow. Same thing with the fairing. The fairing will bring three thousand dollars. That's a, a clear. Uh huh. The gentleman bought this motorcycle brand new, and then he put twelve thousand dollars. And I have all the receipts, the invoices. These brake rotors are by Eric Buell before he made motorcycles. There are magnesium rims on this one. It has the oil cooler. It has a full clear fairing the CR carburetors, the Corbin seat, the aluminum eccentric swing arm, the limited edition stainless steel super trap exhaust, and uh, been all ported and hopped up. It's very, very fast. Absolutely beautiful. And as I look behind me, I don't even know where to begin. We have a whole row of Hondas. We've got a Kawasaki bicycle, yes. 1976. One year only, all, oh, wow. all aluminum. This is a brand new bicycle. It is all aluminum and they made it one year only, 1976. The BMX historians called me up and needed the serial numbers off the tires so they could verify when somebody restored one if they were the correct tires for the unit. What's the value of that, do you think? 3000 Oh my gosh. Wow, we've come a long way, haven't we? For a bicycle. Absolutely beautiful. And then we have the 1985 Honda, the 87 Honda over here. You've got quite a few Hondas in your collection. That's a one year only, right? We come down the row here, I see. Super sport. Excellent, another old school Kawasaki. Yes, the Spectra <clears throat> 1100. And that's the super rare 83 Katana. Yeah, continuing <clears throat> down the line here. This is amazing. How about this 1983 Suzuki GSX 1100 Katana? Uh, me and five, six of my friends, we went down to Virginia Beach to parachute. And a Harley that was with us broke down. So while they were getting that fixed, I went to the car wash and a gentleman came over and said, he has one in one because I was riding in 1982. And I wound up eventually buying it from him. But this is super rare because it's an 83 1100. And uh, that's one of my favorite bikes. I like it. What do we have here? This one, a gentleman brought me in from Iowa. Mm -hmm. He moved in from Iowa and he wanted it to uh, get up and running. I gave him an estimate and he said it was more than he wanted because he just moved back. So I wound up buying it and restoring that one. That's a 1981 Seca. Yes, 550. Excellent. What do we have right here? This one here, a longtime member of Reading Motorcycle Club and Pagoda, Preacher, 
own this. He had 42,000 miles on that 1979 Daytona 400. And I bought it from him and restored that one. Original paint, but rebuilt the motor and all the mags and brakes and everything else. Beautiful. This is Honda's first year Goldwing, 1975. Uh, I should finish it. It's been sitting here. I have all the parts, just never put it together. But this was one of my favorite bikes because I thought it was a beautiful bike and it should be Honda's flagship being a Goldwing. But uh, today it still didn't take off much in value. Back in the early 80s, you can tell by the paint job and everything else. Basically a stock bike with extended forks, different headlights, handlebars and a king and queen seat. And then, which was popular back then, they put a 16 inch Harley back wheel on it. Perfect, 1973 Honda CB450. This was owned by the local uh, Peugeot dealership owner, uh, Bob Rentschler. And this was his personal bike and none restored nothing replaced uh, other than the seat because he had a king and queen harley seat on it so i put the original seat back on it truly an amazing motorcycle here 1978 suzuki gs 1000 man this thing's in outstanding condition tell me about this one Ken. that's uh we did a total restoration last year on that bike i did it because it's suzuki's first year they made a 1000 cc bike could not find an original exhaust for it, so that is a brand new hooker uh, exhaust system, and uh, never started it since I rebuilt it. Any desire to? Huh? Any desire to start it up? Take it for a ride? Uh, not really. I, I, I ride. I ride my katana. That's true. I mean, let's be honest. We yeah. take a look at Pennsylvania weather. We have a mountain of snow out yeah. there, salt, dirt. Some of these bikes, you got to probably just say, I don't ever want to take them out. Uh, no, because so you gas them up, put oil in them, batteries and stuff like that, and, and then just to go for a ride, uh, it would take a lot of time just to undo them again. So they're all put in here dry with no, no gas, no oil, no batteries. Smart move by you because we know now uh, with how much ethanol there is in the fuel, I can tell you this as a KZ guy, sometimes 30, 45 days is all it takes to gum yes. up the carbs. Yes, it is very bad. And then this one here, this is made three years, not to be outdone by anybody. They took their forks off for their 1971-72 JT60 Mini Enduro and put on their bicycle. But they say it was too heavy of a BMX bike, but that was made three years. All right, here's a throwback that's going to bring back some childhood memories for many, that's for sure. 1967 Yamaha YL1 Twin Jet 100. Ken, this thing is spotless. Uh, electric start. Start and this right. has all the accessories on it from Yamaha, the turn singles, the engine guards, the saddle bags, and the luggage rack. This is all original, okay? The gas tank was re-chrome plated and just the stripe was painted. The rest of the, all of this is original paint. Uh, the other items have been painted. Uh, and look right next to it, right? 1963 Yamaha YG1T Trail Master. You told me you actually entered this one in a show and it scored very in, high, right? In the antique show, not just the motorcycle show, but the antique show. And out of 100 points, we got 99 and a half. They took a quarter point off for too shiny a paint and a quarter point off for too shiny a wheels. But we won the Red Wolverton Award with this one also, which is a high prestige if you're a mechanic. Uh, if everybody knows Red Wolverton, he used to race the Indians and stuff. And the Perkum chapter of the Antique Motorcycle Association each year gives out that award to the best motorcycle to show. So impressive. Over here, an old school check. <laughs> the canceled yes. check. Is this from your dad's business? Yes. Wow. I have many canceled checks to Yamaha International uh -huh. for parts for $2.86. Oh. $4.00. When do you send two dollars or four dollars to a company for parts? So, what did fifteen hundred and seventy dollars buy you back then? Five new motorcycles. Oh my God! <laughs> two of the eighties, two of the one hundreds, and a one eighty for one thousand five hundred seventy dollars. And we know we got a lot of Honda Elsinore fans out there, so we have to do this one. This one's a fifty cc MR fifty nineteen seventy four beautiful bike. Yep. What'd yep. you do to this one? This is a total restoration. I always loved these little bikes, so 
I found one, so I restored it better than it came from the factory. How long does it take you to do a restoration from start to finish, generally speaking? Oh, on the average of 100 to 160 hours. Wow. I know. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah. hey, good work takes a whole lot of time, yes. doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And it's a whole lot more expensive than people think. And that's not looking up locating parts. It's not locating parts. A very rare rabbit scooter. What year is this? <laughs> I don't even know. 63? Uh, 65. Oh, my gosh. Where did you find this? That was actually my father's. Oh, that's a cool and, homage. Yes. It actually has two uh, six volt batteries to make a 12 volt system. This is nice underneath as it is on the top. Oh my gosh. That engineering, look at the kickstart. It goes onto the crank. <laughs> Your dad would be proud of how you kept this thing. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> he could never make it run, but I made it run. All right, now many of you may be asking, how does this magic happen? How do we get these motorcycles so sparkling clean, especially the engines. Well, let's check out the vapor blaster and the engine room. This uses soft cell contained recycles. It uses glass bead. It's much better than sandblasting because it will not remove any metal. It will remove only <clears throat> uh, paint, carbon. But if you could have a block in there with rubber seals and stuff in it, it won't even affect the seals. But it is definitely something you need to restore before you polish motorcycle parts or paint parts. Yeah, Vapor Blaster, even Jay Leno uses a Vapor Blaster. <laughs> sure, now one thing I wanna talk about too is it's it's not just a magic wand. It takes a lot of hard work in that machine, right? It takes a lot of hours to get it, it clean? It depends on the part. It's uh, time consuming, but some of the parts, uh, if it's been stripped from clear coating already, which you would just use your normal paint remover, then the parts come up very clean. Here is a head I did last night. <clears throat> it brings that aluminum head back to like brand new. Wow. With no pitting or anything where sandblasting would destroy this head. Sure. And then to paint the cylinder, you vapor blast it, get rid of all the dirt, the crust, and it cleans all the surfaces up beautiful without removing again any metal. Nice. How long did that take you? This, uh, for these two items, might have taken one hour. Not bad. Yes. To get polished, they'll come get polished like this. But to redo them, you have to paper blast all the, and then they come, and then seat hinges, whatever you want to paint or that there, again, doesn't remove any metal. What do you use to polish? Buffing wheel? Yes. Uh, Jewelers Rouge, many different um, <clears throat> compounds. You got the, the brown for doing real fast, and then you got the white, and then you have a super white, and then you have to use different buffing wheels. I use Bush. Bush products are very good. They even make a polish. Ah, you know where I found that? Larry McBride shop. Yes. He has that as well. He told me that's the best polish yes. you can get. Yeah, even really better good. than mothers. This is very good. This so do the trick. There's our motorcycle tip for you guys. You but want to polish up they, some of they that. They sell the buffing wheels and the jewelers rouge too. Everything else. This is for original bolts because you know a lot of people overlook the hardware, yeah. right? And everything just gets re zinc plated. There's all the screws it's here. These are all re zinc plated like carburetor brackets, foot pegs. Okay, now they were vapor blasted, zinc plated, and then painted those. Where do you but, send them to get zinc plated? Uh, can't determine that. Can't determine. Uh, all right, that's proprietary. <laughs> I get it. We all got <laughs> secrets. Even, um, how much is it roughly to get something zinc plated? Generally, a uh, complete bike I can get done for like $250. Wow, but that's But do you buy all these? Thought. These are the flanges for the exhaust for the CB. Uh, it would cost you that much just to buy these flanges without getting all your screws. Uh, screws alone, okay, if you had a, they might be asking $6.95 for that screw because it has a OEM part number and another $6 to ship it, well, you would have tons of money in, but the main thing there is the head size on the early ones are 14 millimeter, and if you were to try to even order them OEM, they would come through in a 13, then it would not be period correct. So to stay period correct with every nut and bolt, they got to get cleaned and zinc plated.
comes out beautiful. And they get $20 for this nut and adjuster nut and bolt. And I said, I can get the whole bike done for like $250. Amazing. Mm -hmm. We're back to spot this. Now this is an item that wasn't done yet. This was just stripped, but now it has to be polished up. And then I'll, all these are items that are cleaned up, waiting to go out to get zinc plating. Seems to me you really have to be organized to be able to take one of these apart and remember where everything goes. 59 years of doing it. That helps too, right? <laughs> that helps. That but helps. I suggest anybody that was going to do it, take pictures and then take the bolts, write them down, and the length of them, the size of them on a piece of paper. So when you go back to put it back together, you say, okay, I need this size bolt, this long to go there. And so take your pictures and then you can even keep them in Ziploc bags, the front end, the rear end, and any motor stuff, keep in another bag. That will be much easier to reassemble. This is a box where you get shipped out to get chrome plated. This is a 1965 Yamaha we just made run, okay? This is a 1979 IT 175. We've been restoring that. This oh, is wow. a, This is a strange one because it has a model shop goes all the way up to the Okay. <clears throat> this is, uh, it goes down to Maryland. That's a DT 1974 360. This is one of my own personal ones, SL. 350 which is really early because it has the one down tube and they just took their street motor and put into this frame with electric start oh my gosh then in 1971 they did cut the motor off and deleted the electric start and then they put two down tubes on it now ken if you can't i promise you we're not gonna make this a five hour video but why don't you <laughs> swing that door open real quick and let's just let's just take a peek this is what would you call this part this is just repair right this is, wow yes this is customer service uh we do have a very good turnaround time uh some of this is just to make run this is not restoration this is just more uh items and ken here's how we know you're unfortunately a dying breed people that do what you do because a lot of these dealers won't even take in motorcycles that are more than what 10 15 years old now uh, actually seven to 10, seven yeah, to 10 the dealers actually send me a lot of work. Wow. Because, uh, it takes too much time to do one. So they say, no, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, they don't know what to do if they see points, huh? Yeah. <laughs> because the sad part about it is, <clears throat> okay, to spend that many hours on one bike, you can't even get your shop rate. You have to come down to 60, $65 an hour because you get 100, 140 hours. Makes so, sense. But I did it as a hobby and it turned into a business. <laughs> <clears throat> that is in their 50s to their 70s like I am, want what they had when they were kids. And they want them to look nice. And it's a $5,000 motorcycle. And he says, well, he would sooner spend $10,000 for a vintage motorcycle that he can ride rather than buy a new bike. And in another five, seven years, this bike will come up to be an $8,500 motorcycle. Right now it's a $45,000 to $5,000 motorcycle, but <clears throat> if he hangs on to it, he'll be able to get his money back. Impressive. Yeah. Ken, I got to ask you about something real quick that I heard the announcers talking about at Meekum. No, as you pointed out, the motorcycle market, especially the Japanese market, exploded the last three, four years. Uh, values just going like this. But they did point out they don't see too many young kids, too many millennials, too many Gen Zs walking around these shows. Is that eventually going to catch up with the motorcycle collector market, much like the hot rod market saw? Well, in my opinion... Right now, the market's high for the 70s, 1970 motorcycles because people are in their 50s to their 70s, and that's what they had. When we move on another 20 years from now, that generation's going to want what they had when they were kids. So, yes, it will. The, the stuff from the 90s and the 2000s will become popular, but again, it's going to take the 40, 50 years in order to do it. So you hear that guys? If you have bikes in the basement, keep them nice, save them. You won't believe what's going to end up being collectible someday. Yes. 
you take a 1969 CB750, the holy grail of a, of a Honda 750, the Sandcast model is bringing $40,000. Oh my gosh. That is very high for a Japanese. A Kawasaki 1973 Z1 900 will bring twenty-five to forty thousand dollars again, depending on the condition. Staggering, so right? They yes, I never ever thought uh, a motorcycle would cost so much. <laughs> yes, and we have only scratched the surface. We're going to give you a quick glance at some of this other cool stuff. Let's see what other buried treasure we can find. Reading, Pennsylvania, Ken's. Oh my goodness, look at this room, it never ends guys. I hope you appreciate us being on this quest to bring you the most impressive motorcycles we can find. Wait till you see this. Ken, I think it's safe to say you got a couple in this room. Oh my gosh, what are we looking at? Oh, a variation of Hondas and uh, Kawasaki's in there. My favorite Suzuki Katana Kermit. Which is an 82. I was going to ask you, what's your favorite motorcycle and why? So you got to go back and show us that one and Kermit explain. Kermit, because I rode Kermit to uh, California three times. And, three times? From uh, Pennsylvania? From Pennsylvania. 11,000 mile trips. Sometimes with three guys, sometimes with six guys, and sometimes by myself. How, how many and, stops? A uh, month. I always take the month of September. Shoo. It's an excellent... So you took your time. It's an excellent month to go for a motorcycle ride. The kids are back in school. Motels are plentiful. You don't have to book ahead. The weather is still good. Head north first. Do a loop and come back through the south home. Excellent. Good idea. Well, let's see this motorcycle you took to California. I'm impressed. I've always wanted to do it on my Hayabusa. I don't know if my back can take it. <laughs> It sits back there in the corner. Here. here it is. Wow. Have you owned this since new? No, I bought that from a gentleman. It was a rusty boat and rebuilt it. And uh, it's actually time for the engine to be rebuilt. But When's the last time you took it to California? What year was it? Oh, my God. That has to be 20 years ago. 20 years ago. <laughs> I was still an old motorcycle 20 years ago. Were, did you have any concerns about taking it that far? No. I just had to carry chain oil. To lube the chain, uh, but now never broke down. When I would change my oil, I would get out to the west coast and go to a gas station where a young boy would be working in the evening and ask him if I could change the oil so I didn't have to change it behind the motel and dump and have a place to put the oil. And they always accommodate me. You That's can, cool. I carry my oil filter with and a clutch lever. Because people say a clutch lever is like, yeah, if you happen to fall over, you can't really stop and pull away. If you fall on the right side, break the front brake lever, you can drive a bike That's without a front yeah. brake lever. So I always carried an extra clutch Smart. lever and chain lever. Smart. Very astute. And that is a gorgeous motorcycle. And gosh, it would take us, like I said, this could be a six-hour tour, which we'll save for later because we know you got to get out of here. But just give me an overview here. What are we looking at? Yeah, this is the last year's CB350 Honda 1973. That's a G model with a disc brake. The only year they put a disc brake on them. Then they came out with the CB360. Now that's a cheaper model because that had a drum brake. They had a drum and a disc. And this one I pulled out of a dumpster and I restored that one. Wow. Just to restore something. And look at all these gas tanks yeah. over here. My yeah. goodness. Miscellaneous ones, different ones. Uh, that's a 79. That's the 10th year anniversary of Zeka. Uh, 10th year anniversary CB750 up there? Mm, wow. Yep. And the dark blue one's a CB400F. And then that blue one below it is a Daytona, four, uh, not a Daytona, just an RD400. And then there's some Kawasaki. Oh, yeah. Uh, H1s. Beautiful. Look at all the toys, too, the yeah. trinkets. The snap-on cups, the drag racing stuff. Wow. Well, we actually raced the Mini Grand Prix downtown, and we won that. That's many years ago. Roger Penske was the MC, or what do you call it? Grand Marshal, and we won that. So cool. I really appreciate you showing us this. This is amazing. Yeah. Hot rod up on the lift, too, behind us. Yeah, that's a 1937 
metal chop top, leather interior, fuel injected Corvette, uh, air ride all the way around. I've been beautiful. French and tail lights in, and there's some more bikes I didn't get to work on yet. There's two RD 350s, a Hodaka, and a CB 750 automatic. Your volume is very impressive. Your body of work is impressive. A lot of guys maybe strive to do one or two of these yeah. in their lifetime. I know you do it for a <laughs> living, but still, I mean, um, where do you find the time? No, 12 hours a day, six days a week. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. What's your crew like that you bring in? Me. Just you, right? And, Just, and your buddy in there that helps you part-time, right? They, they, Sonny. Take, they take care of the customers, okay? And I do the vintage. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why half is only half done because I have a bad habit. I buy one and I start working on it and then I buy another one and I drop that one and start working on another one. <laughs> Very bad. Very bad. But I have all this stuff done. But it pays me sometimes when I send something out to the paint shop to get it all painted or chrome plated and I send pieces out. And that's like this one here. I was making a custom, very rare 90cc with the... It's going to have the leg shields on it, but I made 72 spoke wheels for it to modernize it. Gorgeous. Yeah. Love it. The engine's been sitting on that shelf for two years. We're not done yet, guys. We're going to get a look at some of these amazing parts. Wait do you see what he has in here. It's a little icy. Excuse me. I should have brought my skates. Welcome to, uh, welcome to Pennsylvania in February. You guys are jealous down, down south. I know you are. Whoa! Just part of their collection. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Yeah. How? I mean, can you put a number on how many disassembled motorcycles we probably have here? Look at this row of tanks. Let's just say I sold 150 uh, to uh, eBay. A gentleman that was, does an eBay store. I sold him 150 bikes. Wow! How did you amass all of this? Uh, being in business for 42 years. <laughs> Have you bought a lot of collections or is it just no, customers? This is people back in the 70s and 80s, they were getting rid of their motorcycles. Wow. They didn't realize it would ever get to this point. You know what I mean? And you wisely have kept everything. Well, these are this look at all these stuff. engines. These are all RD 350, RD 400s, YDS 3s. This is more Yamaha here. Each row is separate. That's Yamaha. This is Honda. Oh my goodness. This is Kawasaki here. And there's a lot of H and all the triple stuff's back on them shelves. Oh boy. Yeah. And then this is Suzuki. And there's tons of new Suzuki stuff. Oh my gosh. But this this is all carburation. This 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 whole row here. This whole road is all carburetors. It's oh my. all carburetors. Wow. Yeah. You don't have any uh, 29 smooth bores, do you? No, they didn't come original. <laughs> <laughs> Been looking for a set of those. Yeah, they didn't come original. Wow. But no, Look at all the seats, yeah, the exhaust. Well, this is a Zuki row. See, this is the ones that belong on that GS 1000 in there. Uh -huh. They just didn't look nice enough to put on uh, the average person would say what the hell is wrong with and you? as you see the headers are bad here but they're welded fast okay so i got the new outside ones but not the new inside and not many people want a chrome plate exhaust systems understand that no this is amazing guys this is like well could you imagine digging through here for a few hours a few days a few weeks did I hear you say some triple engines back here? Yeah, this is all Suzuki's though. Wow. The GT 380, 550, um, might be a, one or two 750 parts. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And those boxes are all triple cows up there. Yeah. All right, Ken. So <laughs> here's the burning question that everybody watching, I'm sure, wants to know through their smartphone, through their television. Is this for sale? Everything's for sale. Everything is for sale. Okay, That's so... if the price is right. You know, I'm just saying they don't realize what you... 
some of this stuff is worth and how much are spent on those motorcycles. That's true, guys. Fair yeah. warning. Please don't try to beat up Ken because he's very astute. He knows yeah. what this stuff is worth. Ken, what's the best way for somebody to get a hold of you if they're looking for something? Mm, they could email me at kmillersr at gmail.com. Excellent. Mention Cycle Drag. Maybe you'll get a couple bucks off. You never know. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. And then speaking of that, what if somebody wants to get a hold of you for a restoration? You're still actively taking? Yes. Wow. Yeah. It, it depends on <clears throat> the last gentleman that dropped one off uh, last September. I said, don't call me until May, June. That's how long <laughs> it takes. It makes it sense. It takes that long. Because it makes sense. I have more than one I'm doing at a time uh -huh. and until you locate all the parts. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> right now I have six started. Uh, GT80, the IT, the DT, the, another RT2, the CB750, and I don't know which other one. But there's quite a few started, but we, we move them along really quick. We give them uh, an idea what it's going to cost. Uh, we get a deposit, then we take it apart, show them pictures as we proceed with it when it starts selling and they're welcome to show up anytime they want to without even notifying me you know what i mean and they see the progress and everybody is super happy we do from canada to florida it, cool. it has become really big because <clears throat> like you said most people they think they restore something but if you look closer than 10 feet away mm -hmm. it's uh there's many different levels many levels. many different levels yeah. of restoration mm -hmm. yeah Hold on, guys. We're not done just yet. So much to see. I told you, and we're just scratching the surface here. Whoa. You are so unbelievably organized. I can't imagine the hours you have into getting all this stuff in the correct owl. What are we looking at? You can't find this stuff if you don't know where it's at. But this is all <clears throat> vintage Honda, Yamaha, Kawasaki. I buy up all the brand new rims because I lace up wheels and stuff. And a purist, you, uh, what you would call it, the, the new rims are going to have the stampings on the outside instead of in the middle here by the valve stem hole. So when I find a new old stock rim, uh, I buy it. Impressive. And hold it. <laughs> this is a 1962 Yamaha YDS2. Uh -oh. And I should have... Should have been working on this one, but here is the tank. It is pearl white with blue, and this is the original color. Original. Feel how smooth that is. I'm afraid to touch yeah, it. Just Are you sure? You don't even feel a, a, a difference oh in it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is super, super rare. Uh, but I have the whole bike. And I should actually put that one together. But like I said, with the customer stuff... <clears throat> And put the M1 on there and put a 33 in it. So not just motorcycles, hot rods too. Tell me about this gorgeous piece of history. 1933 um, Ford three window coupe. It's an outlaw body. It's a fiberglass car. Um, took about five years to build it. Everything is polished stainless steel, the gas tank, the running boards, the A-arms, everything on this. The running boards, I made my own strips. I went down to Quaker Town, got solid stainless steel, made the strips for it and stuff. Um, has air conditioning, electric windows, cruise control, tilt wheel, and just about everything a modern car has. 1953 Buick. Wow. Portholes from the Buick cars. This is Buick to see it. And I machine them down to fit and cut them open so they're actually functional. You know what I mean? And broke the headlight stays, so I got mad and parked it. Seventy-two Honda XL two fifty finally restored, and you say this one's headed yeah. for Canada? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. This is pretty. Mm -hmm. All right, Ken. This is going to be your daily driver. Give me a tour of this amazing motorcycle. What are we looking at here? That's a one year nineteen seventy. YGS6, and it's a Catalina. 
hundred percent original. Hundred percent original. This is detailed out. They're only per original per ones. Purchased mm, September of this year. Hi, nice stickers. What's your name, sir? Gene Where are you Shakespeare. From? Mountain. I love it. RMC. Yes. Do you watch Cycle Drag? Yes, I do. Thank you so much. Does this have a sticky back? It sure does. And then I need another one. I'll put in in uh, the office on the cord there. Just right in the middle of that. That work. How's that? I appreciate it. Thank you. I really appreciate it. This has been great. Thank you so much. I love anytime I get to check mm -hmm. out some finely restored immaculate motorcycles. It's a great day for me, and I really enjoyed sorting through your collection. I appreciate it. Anything else you'd like to pass on before we go here? No, I thank everybody for viewing in, and I thank you, Jack, for coming over. I'm surprised that somebody be interested in my little shop. Man. We, like I said, you, you might have to kick us out. We could spend a couple weeks here, maybe a couple months here. I love it. Speaking of that, guys, if you want a restoration, get a hold of Ken. If you want some parts, get a hold of him. Mention Cycle Drag, and you know we will continue the quest to bring you the most impressive motorcycles we can find. If you'd like to watch another video, here's one for you. And, Click on it. And one other thing. If you have a vintage motorcycle and you have a question on restoring it as far as timing-wise, carburation-wise, anything... Uh, text me and leave your phone number and I'll be glad to try to help you out. Very cool. We appreciate it, guys. You know if there's anything fast motorcycles, we're in. Cycle drag rolls on.